Welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are going to seal up the front end of the 69911 so that my CSF drag radiators garner maximum suckitude. <laughs> Hey and welcome back to the channel, I'm Michael. This car is a 1969 911S race car. I'm converting back to a street car and putting a twin turbo Subaru flat six and all kinds of fun mods into. If you are brand new here, welcome. It's customary to send a high five in the comments and say what's up, tell me where you're from, and if you could, consider subscribing and leaving a comment and like and all that thing. You know, smash and do all the things. Anyway, Today, I've got to seal up the front end of this car. I've installed a couple of CSF drag radiators, which are super high tech, but to work properly and to give them maximum suckitude. Yeah, that's what she said. Oh, that's clever. It's creative. To give the air the maximum amount of pressure into the radiator, I have to fill all the holes. That's also what she said. Dude, really? <laughs> I get it. I mean, we could try a little harder, let's be honest. That's, it's a little played at this point. Well, no, dude, I was just like, I was saying, that's what she said, like it was a girl saying it. Dude, I get it. Oh, dude, you just don't have a sense of humor. I actually have a sense of humor. Do you know what that sentence means? It means I have a sense of what's funny and what's not. And that is, let's be honest, a bit played at this point. All right, whatever, bro. Anyway, so I have to fill all the holes of this front end and make sure it's completely sealed against the environment. And what that does is it gives the air nowhere else to go but through the radiator, which is exactly what we want. So basically, I'm gonna be doing a lot of CAD design, which is computer-aided design today, onto paper, and I'm gonna show you guys actually a really cool tool. That's what she said. All right, dude, really? <laughs> really? Yeah, I get it. Again, I totally get it. It's just not that funny. Holy. Um, a really cool tool that I just got from the uh, that place that isn't sponsoring me, but it, it's really cool. It punctures holes and does cool things. But for now, let's just show you what's going on in the front end and let's get to welding. So here's the orientation of the radiators. It's not that dissimilar to what is currently going on with Porsche in terms of how they have it uh, oriented. Basically, the air will come in through this big old bass mouth. It redirects this way to the left and then it goes into the radiators. I've got a big 30 amp fan that is sucking the air this way and then I will vent it out into the atmosphere. So that should give me a great, very positive cooling situation. For those of you that are questioning, is it gonna be enough? Trust me, CSF has been here looking at this car and this is what we've come up with. So I do feel like it's going to be fine. And uh, if it's not, I need to add more than, okay. But basically, to accommodate these radiators, I've had to cut down this chunk of metal and basically bring this triangle up a little bit. You see how this thing is basically got a big gap here? Well, I've got to weld that all up. So I'm going to make a little panel that'll weld over this thing. Then I've got to basically seal the cabin in here so i've got to make some kind of panel here as well as where this blue tape is i've got a seal to the edge of the radiator so basically those are the kind of pieces that i have to dial in today it's not going to be i don't think it's going to be like really crazy fab but i do want to get the thing sealed up so i can get it all basically cleaned up and primed and ready to go so that's the plan for the day why don't we start here in this corner and i'll show you guys a cool new tool that i got that I'm really excited about. So one thing I have to do here is resist the urge to make this like a concours setup. This part is going to be covered in some kind of like undercoat when it's done, maybe some kind of carpeting or something like that. So I don't have to be like completely seamless with it. So I can basically just seal it up, put a little seam sealer on it, and then the whole trunk area will be coated at some point. 
So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna basically just create a panel that welds here to this face and then comes across here and then welds here all with spot welds. So basically I'm just gonna put a lip here and put a lip there and weld it so it's one solid piece and then do the same thing on the other side. It's basically parallel to this surface right here, which is what I want. And I'll probably make a little piece here that seals that up. So this will be a really nice finished triangle in the corner. Then I'll figure out how to box the rest when I get there. Now that I have this piece basically roughed out, I've just got to bend it 90 degrees. I want to show you guys one of my favorite tools that I've ever owned. I just got it, uh, once again from Harbor Freight. And it is a uh, flanger slash air punch. So how I'm going to do this welding is basically plug weld. So two pieces on top of each other, the top piece has a hole in it, you weld through the hole and that connects both pieces together. Then you use a bit of seam sealer and Bob's your uncle. That's what she said. Um, this is the tool and it does two things. It flanges and it punches. But look how cool this is. So I've done one hole already. See that hole? All you gotta do, I've got these holes basically measured out every one inch and you just, and that's it. Then it builds a hole. Isn't that cool? I just think it's such a cool tool. So this was previously me Punching and drilling and punching and drilling and punching and drilling and hours. Like it would have taken me an hour to do something now that is, you've just seen has taken me about 30 seconds to do all of these holes. I mean, look how cool. How awesome is that? I suppose there's worse ideas than to pop a couple here. And there. So I've got some weld through primer on here on the inside. I've got my piece pretty darn close and I want to tack the top part, kind of raise it, make sure it's level with this piece and then I will tack it here.
Okay, so here's the finished product. So this whole process, um, this thing basically seals up this area here. This kind of came with the race car, which is cool. But that seals this area. And I'm going to, probably the next one I do is this one, which is pretty straightforward. It's just a regular straight shot. Then I've got to get to this part, which is a little more complicatory. This one's going to be pretty easy. Literally, it's going to be just like putting a flanged piece here spot welding it up along the edge and then grinding off the outside so it matches this thing and then I'll just tack it together here. So that's pretty easy. But basically this whole video is exactly what I just showed you. Make a cardboard template, cut it out, put a bunch of holes in it, weld it in, hit it with a lot of hammers until it's right. And then what I'll do is I'll just take care of the rest of it and then I will show you guys when it's kind of all buttoned up. Then I'll show you the finishing process and kind of tell you what the plan is moving forward. Okay, it's the next day and I've made a good amount of progress so far. You have to understand that this process is really one of the last two big remaining chunks I have to do on the body. So I have to finish buttoning up this front end and getting it all sealed so that the radiators can have major suckitude. Basically, I've got to seal up the front end and I've got to weld the flares on. Those are the two remaining huge body modifications. Once those are done, my plan is to get the entire thing uh, coated in a direct to metal epoxy primer of some sort. So that's the deal. Let me show you what I did yesterday. One thing I'll say about that flanging tool is it really does give you like a nice professional clean edge. You also have to understand that this is just chaotic. Like it looks bad now, but when it's all ground down and it's got primer on it and it's gonna look great. Uh, I did seal up this hole. This was the hole for the windshield washer reservoir. I will not have space for that right there. So I will have to find another spot for it. Uh, box this thing in, it, it's great, super clean. Remember it did look like this before, so it was uh, slanted down diagonally and then went low, but that's not enough room to fit the radiators in. I put a cover panel here on this part of the square so the radiator will be able to seal all the way up around this edge and have a nice tight fit. And now I have to figure out what goes in here. So I'm gonna put the radiator back in I'm gonna look at the space I have and figure out how to like create a piece that fits in here somehow. All right, there are party people. This thing is all sealed up under here. Really hard to grind this stuff out, but I will. I'll probably use my little finger grinder to grind as much as I can. And then everything's gonna get seam sealer and all the things in here. Now I literally have to do exactly the same thing on the left. Hopefully it'll go quicker. <laughs> hey there kids, a couple days later and it's time to get back to the car. Post pandemic, when my life starts getting busy again, it's harder to work on the car all the time because I have things to do and travels to have and things like that. Before I get into this, let me show you what I just did last night. My buddy Lewis sent me a pair of regular quarter windows. Thank you, Lewis. This is a factory OEM quarter window for an early 911 with the glass with the outside molding, with all of the rubber on it. And I made a little custom bracket right there. And now, this is I would say 3.0 of the uh, automated quarter window. And it's awesome, it works great. Look at that, huh? So, I've gotta still sort out a couple things like I don't know how tight the seal is. I won't really know that until the car's on the road. But what I think I can do is if that's the case, I can always kind of adapt it and pull the motor away, you know, a, a few millimeters until the seal is really tight. Although it looks pretty good now. It could use a little bit of love. I need to check it out on the Grey Ghost and see what sort of the stock one is. Anyway, let me show you what we're doing today. This entire section is now fully sealed all the way in here. And then this is the radiator and this is completely sealed against the radiator. So basically the entire compartment is sealed. The air only has one way to come in and one way to go out. Today we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I have all the pieces that I used on the other side. And so we're going to cut and fabricate and stick this stuff in here. So this is buttoned up. And then when that's done, 
I will see this in here. See this little hole? Hee hoo! I've got to put a flat plate here, like this, and seal this thing up so this compartment is fully sealed as well. And then the front end is completely sealed and ready to go for awesome radiator suckitude. First things first, I've got to give this the treatment I did on the other side, which is to cut this up along the seam so I can bend this whole piece flat and mount it parallel with this front lip. So this whole next process is gonna be me just creating all the same panels. Basically, I'm literally just reversing them and making the same patch panels I did on the other side. Uh, this one I just did fits perfectly. It's got all the same holes and pops right there. So I'll be right back once I make all these and I'll show you how they fit together and then we can weld them in together. All right there, kids. I got everything clamped in. I've made four pieces so far. This main piece that goes over the top, little filler piece, little filler piece, then a filler piece upside down here. Cut them out, plop some holes. Now I'm gonna weld it in before I do this final piece and replace this little guy here with a little sticky Audi piece, which is a technical term that you guys don't have to concern yourself with, but let's weld this sucker up. All right, so here's this piece in. You guys might notice that as I'm welding, you know, I continue to hammer and form the piece into the body. That's just something you have to do. Even if you buy a factory, like OEM piece from Restoration Design, you've got to form it to the body of your car. Anyway, first piece is in. Uh, looks like I have to grab one more spot down here. Then I'm going to put this one in and these two side pieces before I create this piece. Okay, I've got this piece in. I've got one final step to do, which is I want to relocate this bracket from down here, where I think it might interrupt the airflow a little bit, to up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack this little extra piece on, and I'm going to make sure I have the hole aligned like that, then modify it, weld it onto this piece, and then get rid of this extra piece. Does that make sense? I'm just putting a bolt through each one now. I'm going to tack this thing on now so it just locates the bolt. All right, guys, there's that. We are officially in. I gave it a quick little grind, just enough to piss my neighbors off. And uh, you've got a nice clear line through there. And the front end is now completely and utterly boxed in. I still need to make this little piece. I'm not gonna do it now. I'll probably just do it off camera. But I have now a complete seal on the front end of this car, which I had to build from dead scratch. It's pretty complicated in here, and I'm pretty proud of it. There's a lot of custom fab that went into this front end, and uh, I'm really proud of how it turned out. Well, that was not maybe the sexiest video I've ever done. That's but what she said. Not the sexiest thing I've ever done, but 
very necessary to get the infrastructure of the car finished and get the front end completely buttoned up so those amazing CSF radiators have some breathing room is just awesome. What I will say though, is even though this one wasn't maybe the sexiest, I have some absolute bangers coming out in the next few videos. So stay tuned to that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Send me a high five in the comments, whether you're brand new or you've watched all of these videos throughout this entire Blasphemy build. And until next time, you guys be good to each other. See you later.